Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I'm here with my fiance right now, which is so crazy to say. Even like going up to people being like, hey, this is my fiance. Like when we try to introduce ourselves now, we have to get used to that, it's funny. But I just recently proposed, this was like a few days ago, October 8th, 2022, the day that we will clearly never forget. And God's just been moving like crazy, doing a fast work in this area. And I know for my first video back, this might be a shock to some people, but a lot of my viewers are already aware of this from other social media. We're on this crazy journey because what I'm gonna tell you is that marriage is around the corner, it's coming soon. And we know God is doing a fast work. He, he spoke words to us. He said to me, urgency. For, for this area specifically, like urgency. Gabby got a word too, which was? It's not good to wait. It's not good to wait. So we know it's coming soon. He's been speaking this to us. And we have tons of confirmation of that now because we were told to leave Texas on October 6th, which we did. Now we're in North Carolina, which is where I proposed. And to even get the ring was a testimony in itself. And to even get to North Carolina was a testimony because this is a Luke 10 trip. We're going out on faith. We didn't have all the provision to leave Texas. God provided and he even provided for the ring. I didn't have anything to buy this ring. The day that we were leaving, God provided, and I had money during the trip to go and get this ring. And then, in North Carolina, God provided again. Which was my wedding dress. The crazy part was, and I even could have bought a dress, like a cheap one online, but I didn't have peace about it. And so, we've been in fellowship in North Carolina for a few days now, and one day, like, these three sisters that I had just met, it was all put in their heart at the same time to all chip in and buy me a dress. So they took me to get a dress and I tried on three and then I found one that was 100% my size, which is impossible. You always have to alter them. And even the pricing of it was really good and I got a veil and everything as well. So little by little, God's been providing the things that we need very quickly. Amen. And see, the thing that I wanna to say too is we didn't have to go out of our way asking for anything. Is it okay to ever post on social media, hey, you know, we, we know we're getting married, like if anybody wants to help out, feel free. And it's like, we don't wanna do that because we already see that God's been providing. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we could so easily do that. We haven't asked anybody for anything. God just speaks to people, speaks to his body and people offered. Like the ring, that nobody offered to get me a ring or to help me get a ring. They just offered, they blessed me with money and that's how the ring came about. And then with the dress, she wasn't like asking people to get her some wedding dress, but people literally provided that. And we just, same with the rest of the trip. When we got to North Carolina, we didn't have enough money to get to Pennsylvania. A day or two later, God provided the rest of that. So now we have the provision to get to Pennsylvania and New York. I say all this because in the world, we're so used to planning, 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 planning. And, but in the kingdom, you don't have to strive and plan anything. You just have to seek the kingdom first and trust God. So it's just been a beautiful testimony. When I proposed, that was totally the Lord stirring something in my heart that day. I could have easily proposed whenever, but I decided October 8th was the day. Like, it had to be that day. We have to have enough faith that God's going to fulfill the rest of every, every need. So another thing we want to include in this video is we've been trying to do a mini Q&A. We posted on our social media accounts, and we actually ended up filming it, but the footage got deleted because someone's not bright. How did you guys meet? So when I was in my first Luke 10 school, which the Luke 10 schools is how we met, a school that we both went to to learn how to be a disciple and to live this life. So I've been a part of three schools, but in the first school, I was in a cabin towards the end of the school with some brothers of mine, and they were talking about three students that were potentially coming to the second school. And one of those people was Gabby. She did come to the school. We talked a little towards the end. The third school that I was a part of uh, is where things really took off. Yeah, so to make it super simple, we met in Florida in January. I could have said that. <laughs> no, you're fine. I was detailed. It gives, I like details. What advice would you give someone who is lonely and scared of the future? Do you want to answer that first? I'll answer for relationship sense. I know I can very much relate. Like growing up, I wanted to be in a relationship. I wanted to be married, but it was definitely very scary and vulnerable for me. And so for me, it just took a lot of surrender to the Lord and trusting Him because although I wanted it, it definitely took the Lord's pushing me to go out. I love the idea, but that means I'm also called to walk in it. 
and I can't let fear get in the way, especially if you're gonna be one with someone, then you can't have walls and boundaries put up. The only thing that you really can do for all things is just seeking the Lord and trusting Him and asking Him to do it in you. And for a general sense, before I was born again, I was at home, isolated. My dad was working all the time and my brother was never home, so it was just me. I had no idea what my life was going to become, but little did I know that I was never truly alone. God was working on me in that room the whole time. That whole room of just feeling isolated, it wasn't the case. It was just I was looking at all the pain instead of looking to God and what He was doing. Now I have just as much family as I've ever had. How long would you advise someone to date before marriage? How many months or years, for example, would you advise to date before deciding to marry? I don't think it has a number, honestly. At one point I did because of what how... Was it? Well, I would think it would be smart to wait at one time. I would say a year. I wouldn't want to wait too long, especially in this life, because if you're, if God truly puts you with someone like He did with us, then you would just know. And like we know, we, we didn't have to wait that long. We don't even think it's going to be that long at all. We know it's soon. And that's the thing. If God's speaking to both people without a doubt, without questioning anything that it's of God, then yeah, I don't think it's smart to wait at all. Once this whole thing happened to me and Gabby, like we just knew. I mean, the, po the testimony itself is just too powerful to like, you can't really look at this testimony and be like, okay, this isn't of God. So yeah, if God's speaking that to both of you, then I would say put a ring on it, get married. <laughs> I mean, even in the Bible, we don't see the term dating at all. And like, we both talked about this many times. Even before him, I always said, I don't want to date. And the first time I even go on a date, it has to do with my husband. I need to know he's my husband because there's no point. You know, it's very unbiblical and it leads to a lot of temptation. It leads to a lot of bad fruit. And it just, to me, it personally doesn't make sense. But you guys could take that up with the Lord. He pursued me for the first time three months ago. And now we're engaged. And <laughs> I, I'm sure it would have been sooner, but we were apart. Yeah for over a month and a half. Just follow the Lord, the Lord will tell you both, but it's, if it's something that you don't know that you know and you don't have peace about it, then it's probably not the person God's calling you to be with because you're not gonna ever be double-minded in it. Now we're on our last question. What do you believe about physical boundaries before marriage? So I would say it's very important that you remain holy and pure because we know obviously that we're not you're not called to have sex before you're married. There's still other things that you could do that cross the line. So it's important that both of you guys just seek the Lord and ask Him what is too far? How can you remain holy in this? And I wouldn't listen to anyone else in this area because I know for me it was always such a fear. Like I've never been with anyone anyways. Hearing other people's stories and how they've slipped up and how they give how they gave into lust and temptation and sin, it made me fearful that I would do those same things even though that's not something I struggled with. Like some people were very much so intense about it that they said they wouldn't even hold hands until they're married. And so like, I don't want to go against someone's conviction, yeah. but I think sometimes people are very fear-based. Honestly, do whatever you have to do to stay pure, but don't listen to other people's expectations. Just ask the Lord and ask Him what's okay and what's not. Yeah, and it's very important that you actually take the time to talk to the other person about it. Because we talked about it day two, day three or something like that. Day two. Day two. And we were very clear like, are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? Like we talked about holding hands. I talked about putting my arm around her. <laughs> I talked about how can I hug you? Is it a side hug? Can we actually hug? And we were very careful about that. For some people it is a struggle. And then the important thing too is you don't want to make sure you don't cross those boundaries that you talk about. That's just, yeah, you have to have that conversation with the other person. That's all. Thank you all for watching. I definitely want to say I would love to make more videos and upload more and this tends to happen a lot. I'll have a lot of time one season, I'll be uploading like crazy, and I'm going to be getting married soon so I kind of just want to focus on that and what God's doing. The Ivy and I have the same desires so we'd love to make videos, we'd love to do more you know TikToks and stuff like that. God's going to speak more I'm sure and we'll update you. So. Y'all, just be praying for us. Be praying that the Lord provides roots. Amen. <laughs>